everybody. Welcome to Go Carolina's podcast today. And today on the show, we're going to cover one of my favorite subjects in the world, and that's eating. And in particular, we're going to talk about barbecue, barbecue in the Carolinas. And the Carolinas are well known for their barbecue. And I've got a couple of guys on here today that know way more about barbecue than I do. I've got John Rattery. John is a certified barbecue judge. And Walker Stockley is a uh, barbecue competitor and enthusiast. So, guys, thanks for joining me today. Glad to be here. Great to be here. Thank you. Okay. Uh, John, tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got to be a barbecue judge. Um, Well, I'm a retired high school chemistry teacher on the other side of that. But I had some friends that um, had been... uh, interested in barbecue judging and things like that and they just talked me into taking a class and then about 11 years ago they had a competition that was associated with the shrine bowl at wofford and they needed judges in spartanburg so they had a class the week before the competition and so that's how um I I got started with that group and that was through an organization called the Southern Barbecue Network, uh, which is out of Somerville, South Carolina. And then because most of their contests were in the lower part of the state, I found out about the Kansas City Barbecue (laughs) Society and um, took their class and became a certified judge with them because at the time they were... um, the one that was sanctioning the Spartanburg, the Hub City uh, contest in Spartanburg. And there was one in Lawrence and one in Greer. There was in Kings Mountain. So there were a lot more local contests. And then uh, about three years ago, um, I had another buddy who's really involved with the South Carolina Barbecue Association. So I went through their training and became a certified judge for them. And I, I mostly... Um, lately, um, I guess post COVID, I have mainly judged, um, South Carolina barbecue association events because, um, they're more in the upstate. They're all over the state, but they have more contests in the upstate. And Walker, how long have you been cooking barbecue? Um, I was trying to count back. I mean, I've been doing barbecue a long time because, um, my my degree is actually in meat science, and so uh, I, my first job out of college, I worked for a, uh, a meat processor, Roger Wood Packing in Savannah, Georgia, that made smoked so- <clears throat> smoked sausage and smoked meats, and and um, um, but you know, in terms of just like personal barbecue, you know, I've always done ribs and butts from the home, and then but got my biggest smoker back, and I think it was like two thousand and seven. Uh, my youngest son was uh, in uh, a welding class at R.D. Anderson, and they wanted to make a smoker for their welding class project. So I gave them all the steel they needed. So it, the smoker ended up back at my house, a big horizontal offset, and then added another smoker uh, seven years ago and a third smoker this year. Um, so I've got like three smokers on a on a uh, you know fourteen foot trailer. Um, <laughs> So, you know, I keep adding toys, but uh, so most of what I'm doing is, is fundraisers, do, do some catering events, and, and then uh, the competitions um, kind of are, are far and few between lately, but I've always done the Hub City Hog Fest in, in Spartanburg and used to do uh, the Blue Ridge Barbecue uh, Festival up in Tryon when it was in, um, uh, in operation, and and done a few others here and there. Actually, I was uh, trained as a uh, uh, Memphis uh, Barbecue Network judge at one time, but it's hard to find those contests around here. Um, but uh, yeah, I've just always enjoyed doing barbecue and, and just decided to, you know, kind of develop my own sauces and, and rubs and, and uh, see what I could do with it. So uh, I, I'd I'd rather feed 200 people instead of a table of six judges, but because the table of six judges is, is a, a harder group to please than uh, the 200 people. 
John's smiling. I think he probably agrees with that statement. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, that, the, the, the thing, um, and I know you're aware of it, Walker, but a lot of people don't understand with the barbecue judging, they have developed what is like a set point for each meat to try to get the cooks to see if they could hit that. For example, with the ribs, if they're fall off the bone, like in the a Applebee's ad, they're overdone for judges. Yep. And, and if you're cooking for 200 people, you're trying to get it to where it's going to be done, hot, warm, and good to eat over a period of time. And for that contest, you're trying to hit that specific characteristic for whether it's pulled pork, brisket, chicken, or ribs. And so it's kind of a different animal. I know a lot of people, when they first start competing, they come in and they may have even been a professional vendor. Um, I've done a lot with, uh, in the past, uh, Mountain View Barbecue up in Tron. Um, the, the head guy up there, we actually helped him cook at the try and barbecue what he turned in for the contest because he knew what he was cooking to vend. He was trying to get a good product out in quantity and over time versus one box of ribs, one box of brisket and one box of pork that were going to the judges. And so it's, it's a, a little bit different than, uh, uh, so you get a lot of people that, well, everybody at my church thinks my barbecue is great, but I came in 14th place. What What's going on with the judges? And it's, it's the criteria um, that you've got to meet that might be a little bit different from what's a, just a good plate of barbecue. Let's, uh, oh, excuse me. No, go ahead. Uh, so before we get too deep into the details of how the contests work, uh, I know you hear of all the different styles of, of barbecue, like the South Carolina barbecue versus the North Carolina barbecue versus the like Lexington barbecue. And of course you have different sauces like uh, tomato and ketchup based and mustard based and vinegar based. Uh, John or Walker, either one chime in on that. What, tell me what's the, the main difference in those different styles of barbecue. Well, I was I was raised in Memphis, Tennessee, and grew up on uh, kind of more of a tomato based, and and some of it's got some vinegar in it too. But so I was I was totally um, amazed when I came to the state of South Carolina and learned that they had a, a mustard based sauce, and then and then the heavy vinegar in North Carolina. But uh, um, yeah, so so I make all the sauces um, because in the upstate. You've, you've got a very, um, I guess, uh, mixed group of, of barbecue folks and taste because we're kind of we're kind of a, an area where all these different uh, sauces come together. As you go to, you know, towards to towards Columbia, it's more mustard and then up into North Carolina, more vinegar. So so, you know, I've, I've pretty much developed my own sauces for the, you know, like a Lexington vinegar sauce and and then i um, a Carolina mustard sauce based on kind of my own taste preferences and then tested it on other people. And, and, um, um, and then my Memphis style sauces are just, you know, based on just uh, tomato sauce. So, so that's the challenge always going to a contest is depending on where the contest is, 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 is there a certain taste preference for that region? And um, um, so that can always be a challenge sometimes is trying to figure out, you know, what kind of a, a sauce to put on the ribs or maybe you just go dry rub and and um, just a little bit of a little bit of sweetness and without really trying to get into a regional sauce because because sometimes that maybe creates complications for the judges depending on what region you're in. And, and we've had a lot of conversations around the table of judges after the fact of how do we take our personal preference for vinegar or tomato or mustard based sauce out of it and just decide, is it good barbecue independent of our personal preference for that sauce? Like vinegar and pepper is not my favorite. I grew up up here. It's just not what I was used to, 
but I have to be figure out how to put that aside and say, you know, was it a very good execution? Did they hit all the requirements? Was it a great execution of barbecue? Personal taste aside, you know, it, it, one of the one of the people that trained me said it's kind of like if you're judging a cake contest and you don't like chocolate cake, you can't mark them down because they turned in a chocolate cake instead of a white cake if it's a very good chocolate cake and you have to figure out how to overcome. And I mean, it's subjective, which is why there's six judges around the table instead of just one, but it's still one of the things that we strive for is, is, is try to decide that. And there used to be a contest in South Carolina that was for the Agriculture Commissioner's Cup, and they had to turn in pulled pork with two of the four South Carolina sauces on it. They had to show that they could execute at least two styles of South Carolina barbecue. And most of the teams tried to do all four to show that they could, you know, if we're going to be the South Carolina Commissioner's Cup winner, we need to be able to do all types of South Carolina barbecue. And I thought that was kind of interesting versus what I've seen a lot is all these TV programs have kind of made it the same. I've judged in Tennessee, North Carolina, South Carolina, and Georgia. And when you get a box, you almost can't tell what state you're in because they've made it look like what one of the big name guys on TV has showed on TV how to turn in a barbecue box. And uh, to me, that's kind of a shame, but you also, because judges are people, you'll get people that, you know, they'll say, well, I just didn't like that mustard or I just didn't like that whatever. And, and so as a, as a competitor, you do have to walk that fine line of, I want to do what I'm really good at, but I also want to know, want to make sure I'm giving the judges something that they'll give me a good score on. Okay. Uh, since I guess most of the people listening probably don't actually compete in barbecue contests. Most of us just like to eat. Uh, <laughs> Walker, when you're getting ready to cook some barbecue, what's, what's the, what makes it good? I mean, what's, I know you got to stay up all night and uh, what's your process there? Well, you know, if you're doing like uh, uh, pulled pork, uh, I, I prefer to use Boston butts just simply because, um, you know, there's, there's, um, not any skin kind of covering the meat. So the meat will take in quite a bit of the smoke flavoring uh, versus like if you use a, uh, a picnic shoulder that has a lot of skin on it. Um, and so, so when you go to a contest, most of them are going to be using Boston butts for that very reason. And, and sometimes there's, there's certain ways of preparing it too to, you know, trim it the right way. Um, you know, there, there's a, a small muscle that's actually part of the tenderloin that goes through the Boston butt called the money muscle, um, which is the most tender muscle in the butt. A lot of people try to kind of expose it to get it some better smoke flavor and, and cook it just right. So they can pull that out and slice it like medallions, put it in the box. And, and so it gives kind of like a, a higher level of, of, uh, I guess, competency to, to show that they can do that. Um, but it's also, you know, making sure that, um, you know, the, the rub and the seasoning, right. Some people inject it. Um, you know, I, I inject with like an apple juice mixture. Uh, a lot of people will inject and add additional flavor to the meat before it goes on the smoker. And then your dry rub, it, you know, is all over the board, but some people just salt and pepper. Some people get a lot of different seasonings and how soon you do it before you put it on the smoker. Um, uh, probably ribs is one of the more complicated in terms of, of getting the right seasoning, not to overpower it because it's a fairly thin piece of meat. You over season it, you can get too much spice um, and, and you don't put enough on then it tastes kind of bland. So, and, and then, you know, it's, it's kind of hard to inject a rib, but, but like you said, uh, John, you know, you, it doesn't have to be fall off the bone because that's bad in, in competition. So, so, you know, the, the process uh, throughout the night of cooking is, you know, maintaining that temperature, depending on what the temperature of the atmosphere is. You know, if it's colder, it's going to slow things down, take more heat. And, and so, you know, when do you start putting the smoke to it? 
you know, you're using apple or hickory wood or pecan or, or maple or I mean, depending on the type of meat, you know, beef, pork or chicken. Um, personally, I just use a mixture of hickory and apple wood myself. I think it's a good combination, but there there's all kinds of combinations out there. Um, and then at some point, you know, you, you, you get to a certain temperature, you know, maybe it's 160, 165 internal and, and people wrap it whether it's in paper or foil to hold the moisture and then you finish it up to the, to the right, you know, uh, internal temperature for tenderness. And, and depending on what you're looking for, pull apart or, or just the right texture for ribs to uh, where you bite it, it comes off the bone, but it doesn't fall off the bone. And so, so, so there's a lot of, uh, a lot of temperature probes used. Um, and so I've got, I've probably got more money invested in temperature probes than about anything else, you know, because, you don't want to overcook it. You don't want to undercook it and, um, and knowing when to pull it off at the right time. And then, you know, for a contest, you know, uh, the judges are judging at very specific times in the day. And so, you know, your pulled pork, maybe it's going to be judged at 11 o'clock. So you build your schedule to cook well enough in advance because you got to, maybe you want to hold it for two hours, you know, in a hot box just to let it kind of reabsorb some of those juices and and building that time in the factor of, of the whole cooking process to so that you're not being pushed in and coming up short you know so you're trying to maximize that tenderness that that flavor uh, that aroma um and uh you know the appearance in the box as well so so there's a lot of factors that go into it and um um so it's it's you know it's quite a schedule especially when a contest it, it, maybe you're doing like Hub City Hog Fest, we're doing chicken wings on Friday night, and then we're doing uh, pulled pork, ribs, and brisket on Saturday. And so you're trying to get all those three meats cooked simultaneously and come off at the right time and, and the right tenderness uh, to go into the box for whatever the judging time is that day. Um, and uh, and still, you know, stay awake for the uh, awards uh, later that day. So, so do, do you have a a designated sleeper when you go to a contest that, that, that drives you home the next day? <laughs> Not necessarily, but, you know, the team may have different shifts, you know, uh, uh, you know, throughout the night, somebody maintaining the, the fire pit, you know, and, and, and actually I may have uh, two or three smokers going simultaneously, you know, with different meats and depending on what you want to do. Cause, cause you know, you don't, you know, you don't want your, um, your pork dripping on your, on your brisket, you know, and, 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 uh, a lot of times you'll see contestants with, you know, bullet smokers or, or big green eggs and each one of them's got a different meat on it, you know, um, uh, cause you know, you don't want that other meat to contaminate the other, um, and be able to control. Maybe you've got a totally different cook schedule for the different meats, but, uh, so, uh, you know, it's, um, some of the contests provide the meat, so you don't really get to pick it. And other times you do. Um, uh, brisket sometimes is, is like a um, an add-on event. You know, you pay some money to participate in 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 that event to uh, to share in the money. And, and so you you know you're responsible for buying your own brisket. So you know whether you choose a choice or a prime or a wagyu, depending on how much money you want to spend and invest into the contest and. And um, because, you know, it can make a difference, a prime brisket versus a choice USDA choice grade brisket can be a, a big difference in terms of tenderness, flavor, and juiciness sometimes. What's your favorite meat to cook, Walker? Uh, well, I love doing ribs. Um, I don't know why it is because, you know, you think it's something that's only got 50% meat, you know, and uh, but just something about chewing that meat off a bone is maybe it's... Um, um just something about the flavor i think you know um i, I love ribs myself and um of course brisket you know it only took me 10 years to figure out how to cook brisket right but uh, uh, i think the highest i've ever placed is fourth place on brisket and so I've got to first place in chicken wings one year and then and then the butts and the the ribs you know never have gotten in the 10th place and uh t you know t the top 10 but uh, you know, never say never, but uh, that that one's always the the one that's uh, probably the most difficult for me has been. 
it's it's hard if you only cook for one contest a year and you're going up against guys that they've been getting feedback almost every weekend and they've been tweaking what they're doing. And so, you know, after four or five contests, they've kind of tracked into what, okay, here's what they're looking for this year and here's what I have been doing right and here's what I need to quit doing versus doing one a year and you come in and you, you have to get it all right that one time. So, yeah. Um, That's true. Yeah. But, I, you know, I, I think I, I ended up a cook like um, uh, over 1600 pounds of meat this past year. Um, but, you know, um, I, I didn't do any contests this past year. <laughs> but, uh, so you know trying trying to do just that that one styrofoam box for six judges is totally different than than what i've been cooking the whole year so mm-hmm. you know, it, uh, just uh, tell us i know walker you do a lot of uh cooking for church fundraisers and so forth uh, how much meat do you usually cook for one of those uh, usually it's probably you know three to four hundred pounds i think uh one event this year is i used all three smokers and set a new personal record, 450 pounds at, at one event. So, um, uh, and that was, you know, selling plates and, and, uh, pulled pork or pulled chicken, uh, uh, in the box, you know, for either one pound units or, or plates. So, um, and I've got a, a very unique method for pulled chicken that nobody else does that, um, cause I, I use skinless boneless thighs, net them, make like a big roast, put a dry rub on the outside, then smoke that and then, and then wrap it and finish it up. And then it, it shreds really easy, you know, don't have to worry about any bones and, and, uh, can get a lot of volume on my smoker when I do that. So, uh, people say, Oh, you're giving your secret away. It's like, no, nah, I mean, it's just, uh, it's, it's a unique, uh, thing that I'm not going to give them a spice recipe for sure. <laughs> But, but they want to learn how to stuff it and, and, and do it. I'll be glad to tell them. And I've even put videos on, on Facebook before, you know, instructing people how to do it. So um, it's, uh, it, yeah. So it, it, yeah, it's a, it's a hobby, but, uh, uh, but also, you know, it's, it's about, for me, it's, it's about, you know, a lot of the fundraisers and, and helping these groups to earn money. And, and I'm not looking to make much money out of this and logs them pay for my toys i'm happy you know but um um everybody keeps saying i you ought to get a food truck it's like ah, i've got a day job you know and uh and uh i do very well at my day job so you know maybe one of these days i'll start cooking more but but yeah it it's about um for me it's about helping other people and having fun and really you know even helping other people to about knowledge of barbecue as well yeah let's see and you got to have a smoker so then you got to have a trailer to put the smoker on and then you got to have a truck to pull the trailer it's almost like owning a boat it is so <laughs> i don't know my boat been cost me more money than my my barbecue but uh <laughs> well you you can go small too i've got a friend who started out carrying a 55 gallon 255 gallon drums in the back of his minivan with a tent because you got to be there overnight and he was getting his flavors pretty good, but his tenderness wasn't turning out so great. So then he went back and started it. Once he got the bug, he invested the money. He didn't jump in right off the bat. And now he's got a trailer and three or four smokers and, and uh, he's in the running for one of the top three spots for the whole year for SCBA. But he goes to every weekend, he's looking for somewhere to cook. Um, and, and went to that, but you, you see all, all the whole gamut of, of range of equipment and everything else when you go out and walk among the competition groups. It's interesting to me to see all the different ways you can turn out, quote unquote, the same product from that. Well, let's let's talk about the important thing, uh, eating. Uh, now, John and I are both in Spartanburg. Walker's up. You're at Lake Wiley now. Yeah, Lake Wiley, yeah. South Carolina. So okay. I work in Charlotte. Yeah. Um, so, John, tell us about your your favorite restaurants in the Upstate as far as getting some good barbecue. That's the question I always get asked when people find out I'm a judge, and I hate to, hate to give the answer because the restaurants are so different. But uh, 
uh, Smoky Dreams at the corner of, of Woodruff Road and 14, which is not Spartanburg, but I really like that. I've been and, there one time. It was good. Yeah. And um, I can't remember if it's in Simpsonville or Fountain Inn, but there's a place called Bobby's. That's really good. I have a lot of friends that I used to work with that live over that way. So I go over that way. I eat lunch at Carolina Barbecue on Heron Circle a good bit. Um, and, and theirs is per, pretty good. And uh, I was up your way at, at Lake Wiley um, the Saturday before Christmas visiting a friend of mine who took me out to John G's, which is in Peachland, North Carolina. Have you been out there yet, Walker? It's on my bucket list. They're only open on Saturday. Saturday. Mm -hmm. So you got to get there early and, and then they yeah. – sell out you know so you got to get there before they sell yep. out we 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 got there at a quarter till eight <laughs> and waited in line we were the first people in line but only by about three minutes there were two carloads of people that showed up right after we got there but yeah uh and that was really good um the thing about restaurant barbecue too is it can be really good one time and then you go back and either the cut of meat was different or you get there later in the day. And so it's been sitting in the warmer longer or whatever. And it might not be the same because um, like the smoking pig um, um, over in Pendleton, uh, I've been there and it's been some of the best food I've put in my mouth. And I've also been there and, and wondered if the same cook was cooking just because and I think it was a time of day thing, because one time we got there right before 12 o'clock, another time it was toward the end of the afternoon. Um, but if you could see all of me on camera, you could tell I like to eat, period. So it's, it's probably not, <laughs> you know, it'd have to be pretty bad to where I wouldn't, wouldn't need it anyway. But there are a lot of good places. Um, and I've been interested in how the, in the restaurant world with the smoking, they've sort of branched out. Um, there's a guy who's actually a former student of mine, Mark Wallace, that has a barbecue trailer called Boone Jugs out of Gaffney. And he smokes whole beef tenderloins and then slices them and sells them by the pound. And I try to keep at least a half a pound or so of that in my freezer so that I can have that and thaw it out. And um, so, yeah, there's a lot of good places I like to go around here um, and eat. How about up your way, Walker? I know between your area and Charlotte, there's got to be some good, good, uh, good barbecue. There is. Um, so directly in Lake Wiley, there's not, but if you go up to Belmont, there's uh, uh, Ray Nathan's, uh, up in Gastonia, uh, smoke pits, uh, pretty good. They've got four stores in North Carolina. Um, Max Speed Shop has always been pretty good. There's one in Greenville, South Carolina, too. Um, not a not a whole lot over in Rock Hill, really. Um, you get over to Fort Mill, you get the um, Improper Pig is pretty good. Um, and then in Charlotte, uh, there's one called Noble Smoke that I really like. Um, they've got the big, huge Texas style smokers and, and just do a fabulous job on their, on their brisket and their, um, and their ribs and, and Turkey, not so much their, their pulled pork in my opinion, cause it's more like a over hot coals on the pulled pork. So it's a little bit, not as smoky as, as you would expect in some places, but, um, so there's, there's a lot of good, a lot of good barbecue. There's one also in, in, in Gaffney, uh, like Big Daddy's Beach House or something mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that I've been to a couple of times and, and really do a great job on ribs and some of their other products too. And, and hadn't been there in, in at least a year, but, um, um, and then back in Greenville Spartanburg area, I used to go to Henry's uh, Smokehouse. I love Henry's. The one on uh, Wade Hampton uh, was always my favorite and a uh, little bitty, it's just a hut, you know, you can barely get 10 people in that thing, but it's lying out the door all the time. And, and, um, um, but, uh, and then I heard, you know, Lewis has come into Greenville as well, that had a place in Charleston that he's kind of a, a Texas brisket. So if you want really good brisket, you know, that's, you know, Lewis is, is, is one of the best. Um, so yeah, it's, um, um, when, when I'm traveling, um, I'm always looking for barbecue spots, you know, 
<laughs> so, and I'll, I'll tell the listeners, uh, Walter is not a fat guy. I, I don't know how he manages. <laughs> Because every time I look on Facebook, he's got a picture of some giant plate of barbecue with about 10 different meats on it and six or seven sides. <laughs> I always tease him. I say, well, Walker, where's where's the broccoli on there? But uh, <laughs> No room for broccoli. What are you talking about? <laughs> but, yeah, Walker's uh, quite the barbecue traveler. Uh, You're talking about like you know barbecue places and traveling i guess you know I'd, me and two buddies we went down to texas and, and we did a we called it a, a barbecue crawl we for three days and we hit uh i think nine restaurants in three days and started in dallas ended up in breakfast, austin lunch and dinner three days in a row absolutely yeah as soon as the doors opened, we were there and um uh, i mean lockhart texas which has got several iconic uh old you know, uh, barbecue joints, uh, you know, black Smitty's, Kreitz. Um, and then, uh, we didn't, we didn't make it to Franklin's and Austin, but uh, we did get to snow's barbecue in Lexington, Texas, which is, it was always, it's always been voted number one, but kind of like John G's, you got to get there at eight o'clock in the morning to get in line. And so we're, we got there about eight 30 and there was already 40 people in line. And, and I think they opened maybe about, you know, nine or nine thirty in the morning, um, handing out Lone Star beer to everybody in line. You know, at eight thirty in the morning, and um, <laughs> and uh, and you get the big plate with the pork steak, which is a little different. You don't have that here, um, but uh, the brisket and the ribs and and um, uh, beef ribs are are pretty fabulous down that way. But uh, so. Yeah, somehow, you know, I, I didn't have cardiac arrest and was able to get back home after that event and after eating at nine restaurants. And, and, uh, uh, but no, there wasn't any room for broccoli on the plate, not at all. So, <laughs> how did you pace yourself? I mean, I mean, barbecue places generally don't serve breakfast. So, well, <laughs> you have to, stay. you got three big guys and the other guys were a lot bigger than me. So, that, that kind of helped, I guess. But, uh, we're all just, we're ordering one of everything and then we're just sharing it, you know? So, uh, you know, we're not, we're not trying to eat quantity. We're just trying to be able to get enough to try one of everything, you know, and uh, hopefully it's still on the menu and not sold out. <laughs> okay. John, you done any barbecue tourism? Well, um, you mentioned Lewis. I'm going, the guys that I went to John G's with, uh, a couple weeks ago, we're going to Lewis in Greenville on Wednesday. Uh, and then we're trying to figure out a time when we can go to Scott's and Hemingway, which is whole, he cooks whole hogs. So that's uh, a different. And then and we're going to stop by there on the way and then go down and do a couple of the restaurants in the Charleston and the low country area. But one of the things that the South Carolina Department of Tourism does is they have an online barbecue trail. And you can pull up, you pull up South Carolina barbecue trail and they've got, and he, they keep it fairly up to date with restaurants that are open or closed and they have a description and maps and you can do it by region or you can uh, do those sorts of things. And you can, uh, you can plan out uh, a trip that way. And, uh, um, but I normally just, if, if I'm going somewhere else, uh, like Walker, I'll look and see what barbecue restaurants are around. And uh, there's several good in Asheville. I'm going to get back up to Asheville because um, the neat thing about Asheville is they've got um, a rib place that does Memphis style. They've got another place that does whole hog like low country or South Carolina or Eastern North Carolina. And then they've got another place that's sort of like a Texas style Um so you could hit all three, three big regional countrywide styles all in Asheville. Okay. Yeah. I'm pulling up that barbecue trail while we're talking here, guys. And looks like a uh, pretty extensive list. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm just looking at the low country and it must have 50 or 60 places listed. Um, let's see what it has for upstate. Yeah. Cause you'll, you'll have, you know, Sheely's and, all the all the famous ones and and um 
you know, of course, Rodney Scott, you know, he's got a, um, uh, a restaurant in Charleston now. Um, uh, yeah, I see that listed here. Okay. And, and then the whole, the whole Bessinger clan that, you know, is branched out from, from Maurice, you know, from that whole, I mean, there's, um, besides Piggy Park, you go into uh, Charleston, there's other Bessinger clan members that have, uh, that have restaurants and, and a lot of them are really good. Yeah. I will say that uh, the initial queue in downtown Spartanburg is, uh, is quite tasty. I ate there a few weeks ago. I haven't been there uh, yet. So that's it's, what I'm uh, it's a little more upscale. Yeah. You know, they have, you know, like waiters and stuff instead of your <laughs> typical, your typical <laughs> barbecue place. Yeah. It's funny. Most, most barbecue places are shut down by eight o'clock because uh, I guess I got to get up early to start the next day's <laughs> cooking. But uh, this, this place has, they've got a, a bar menu and they stay up a little bit later. It was good. Yeah. One, one place that's kind of surprising to me is new groove brewing up here in Bowling Springs near my house. He's put a smoker out behind the brewery. And he does a pretty good brisket and, and, and pork sandwich there, too. It's just not somewhere, you know, it doesn't say New Groove Brewing and Barbecue Place. It just says New Groove. But then if you go and look at their menu, it's it's barbecue. And uh, um, it's really good, too. Yeah, we've got one uh, in Rock Hill uh, Legal Remedy. It's a brewery, and, and they do some smoked pork. Uh, there as well that's pretty good uh had been been a year maybe since i've tried their port but um um but you you've got some of those that a lot of times you don't hear about until you go and start tr looking at the menu and it's like oh yeah they got some barbecue so yeah load me up <laughs> all right well guys uh it's been fun uh Hope you guys had a good Christmas and I'm sure I'll probably see John next Sunday, whether I want to or not. Yeah. <laughs> so, well, well I hope to see you at, at hog fest, uh, in, oh, yeah. uh, in the March. And so we'll be, uh, team certified meatheads and, um, me and my long time buddy, Al Williams will be there in our booth. And yeah, let's yeah. give a little shout out for that contest. Cause that's a fundraiser for mobile meals of Spartanburg. Mm -hmm. Tell, tell us the dates on that. Do we have that handy? I think it's April 1st. Yeah, this year. Friday, March 31st. And then the, yes. uh, so the, they'll do wings uh, that Friday night. So anybody that buys, you know, the, a, an entry ticket will be able to go around and try wings at all the competitors that Friday night. And then Saturday is, is the big contest where the SBC, uh, the South Carolina barbecue judges will be uh, doing uh, pulled pork ribs, and and then uh, we've got a side brisket competition. So that'll be during the day on Saturday. And then um, people that have an entry ticket can go around and get samples of, of pulled pork from all the competitors. And and if you talk to us really nice, you might be able to get a little bit of brisket and ribs, but, you know, there's not as much of that. They usually give us uh, extra butts to, to cook to feed to the public. So, so that's – so we're actually – want you to come by and, and help us to get rid of all that, that pulled pork. Did, did that they do take all that home? Yeah. Do they do a people's choice with that too? When they come around, can they vote on the I think They do. Okay. Yeah. I know, some, I know union union does that. And that's, it's always interesting to compare the winners of the people's choice with the, the people who win it from the quote unquote professional judges. <laughs> And sometimes they're very similar and sometimes they are very different. It's really interesting. Done some different formats. So I'm not sure what format they'll use, but they generally have something like that. Yeah. Um, well, look forward to that too. Judging is a lot of fun. It's been a great hobby. Um, and uh, you pay your dues and then you get to eat free bar barbecue. So it's really nice. <laughs> yeah. I'm amazed that people can do that for, and, and almost get paid for it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> get paid in barbecue, I guess. Yep. So, All right, gentlemen. Well, thanks a lot. Uh, thank you for being with me. Yep. Close out the Thank podcast you. now. Thanks Mike. <laughs>